What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross, back at it again with another video. So just got back home from dropping off the homies Chiseled and Unchiseled Adonis uh, at their hotels. They're leaving out of Houston, going back home tomorrow morning as of me filming this. And, uh, you know, we really do appreciate them for stopping by, showing us some love, hooking me and Dub up with some great championship belts. Y'all see it on the wall behind me, had to hang it up. Uh, it was a it was a great time for them being in Houston and looking forward to them coming back to the city. Also, shout out to the homie, uh, Sir Dan Salat. He wasn't able to be a part of this uh, live stream tonight, but he was a part of the live streams this weekend for SummerSlam weekend. So shout out to him. And of course, the homie Trill Billy for being a part of the streams this weekend, man. We really do appreciate him stopping by. We really do uh, appreciate just being him being there you know he was dealing with some medical uh issues not too long ago so the fact that he was a part of the stream and y'all showed him so much love this weekend it was really dope man and y'all will be seeing more of Trib billy in the future so stay tuned but yeah this was a great uh way to end the SummerSlam weekend with a great monday night raw this raw was fantastic got some stories in motion things are on happening we're gonna talk about what happened yes it's gonna be a late night vid early morning or early morning video but i know y'all been waiting for me to break things down and where i think things are gonna go so let's start with gunther starting off the show as the new world heavyweight champion gunther had his suit on he's looking good and he he's basically saying you know I'm going, what y'all thought I did with the Intercontinental Championship, y'all have no idea what I'm about to do with the um, World Heavyweight Championship. You heard some people in the crowd chanting, you deserve it, and then you also heard some people in the crowd saying, no, he doesn't, but the guy definitely does deserve it. The dude is putting on some of the best in-ring work we've seen out of any wrestler in quite some time he brought some great prestige to that intercontinental championship and i think he's gonna do even better things and bring some more prestige to that world heavyweight championship and he made it known like nobody on this roster is ready for me but if you think you can take this from me i hey, step up and i'll step you down every time and then we heard Randy Orton's music. And this was a really great surprise. Obviously, Randy Orton being on SmackDown. This was very interesting, but it all tied in together. Randy came out there to congratulate him, but he also let it be known to everybody. To be honest with you, I'm the reason that you actually are this are the, the new world heavyweight champion. And also... You really didn't beat me. My shoulders wasn't pinned to the map, but the referee decision is final. Now, normally I wouldn't do this, but Triple H said we were going to have to run this back. And I think it's time for us to run this back. And I love that they brought that up because Randy shoulders clearly wasn't on the mat at King of the Ring. They brought it back up and obviously they kind of put it in the background because Randy has been f uh, feuding with the bloodline so it made sense that once that situation was done for him to kind of say hey hold on there i i need to you know we need to rectify this and what i love about what they've been doing with gunther gunther wasn't afraid gunther wasn't even worried he still had this smug smile on his face and he said you know what you know what i understand where you're coming from you know that some can say that is a blemish on my on my record or or some can say that is a little bit of that taints my victory so you know what if that's what you want okay bash in berlin we can we can run it back randy orton versus gunther two at bash in berlin and i love that because i love the fact that he doesn't want any asterisks he doesn't want any idea or anybody to think well the only reason why he has the championship because there was a weird scree finish at uh king of the ring so and i like that he mentioned that like you know what that that did bother me that finish did bother me it adds an asterisk to everything that's happened so far after that no i want this to be a final decision on who's the best and he stuck his hand out he shook his hand they dropped the microphone all you can hear is what they're saying on the camera and at this point randy uh 
Guter, you know, pulled him close. He's like, hey, I know your thing is, you know, RKO out of nowhere, but you're not going to surprise me. There's nothing you can do to surprise me. I'm not going to be surprised by whatever you do. And I love Randy's response. Randy's response was like, good. I don't want you to be surprised. I want you to see when, I, when I'm going to hit you with it. I want you to see what happens to you in your face. Just letting it, know, letting it be known. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. I do think, obviously, Gunther is still going to retain. Um, the question is, how will the finish be? Will it be a clean win? Will it be some asterisk behind it? I think they're going to give him a clean win here. It's going to be a good main event. He's not losing at Bash in Berlin. It's only a few weeks away. And this works because you're trying to set up matches and feuds for a pay-per-view or PLE that's literally like three weeks away. We just had SummerSlam. Now we're setting up for Bash in Berlin, which is at the end of this month. So... How do you do that where it makes sense and you're not just throwing matches? Well, guess what? You have storylines that never got finished. You bring them back up and you just insert them. Plug and play. I love that. That is great. Can't wait to see this match. First one was good. It, real, uh, it was a weird finish. Hopefully this one will be even better. We will see. Looking forward to how that plays out. So, we got to talk about, obviously, Damian Priest coming back and you know coming out there he was walking with a purpose you know how Damian Priest be doing that little power walk he was walking with a purpose there was no jokes no smiling he wanted to keep, give Finn Balor the beats and we wanted to see it so he's out there he's like bro you know how I am you know where I'm from I'm not even mad that I lost the title I can get that back I'm just mad that my brother is the one to do it to me the one to screw me over so Finn get your bitch ass out here so you can catch this ass whooping like a man so Finn comes out on the screen in this menacing look with the purple light and he was like you did this to yourself my brother we always said there's no leader in the judgment day but look at you ever since you won the world heavyweight championship ever since you won that title you've been acting like the leader and they've been planting those seeds with Finn Balor giving him that look like what's going on here you've been acting like the leader and then I love that they brought it back. He said he talked about last year at SummerSlam when Finn was going against Seth and he and Finn brought up the situation with Damian Priest and, and feeling like you're the reason why I didn't win last year. So I sat there and I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited. And that's when I struck. And it was such... It was a good callback to what happened with Finn at last year's SummerSlam, feeling like Damian Priest was the reason he didn't win. And we had been talking about they've been they're going to set this up, they're teasing this, and they finally pulled the trigger at this year's SummerSlam. Long term, long uh, long term storytelling, uh, uh, you know, long storytelling. This is what you want. You want stories to make sense. Like, oh, if you remember last year, okay, that makes sense. For someone to have that grudge and just waiting for the perfect moment to screw you over. So I love the long, a uh, long term, a uh, long term booking, booking or storytelling here. That was great. And then he said, you know what? I'm not going to fight you tonight. I'm going to have JD fight you tonight. But I want you to know when every, when you think it's safe, when you think you're good, when you've forgotten about me, just know I'm going to stab you in the back again and again and again. And then he shows the new version of Judgment Day will live kissing on Dominic. And then you have JD and you have um, you have um, Carlito. This is the new version of Judgment Day that they're going with now. And I, I love this, but it set up a match between JD and... Um, JD and Damian Priest later on in the show. So, we got to talk about the CM Punk segment. He comes out there. He has a smile on his face. You know, he, he lets everybody know, you know, if people want to know why I'm smiling, well, it's because I'm finally back in Baltimore. You know, I haven't been back in Baltimore in many, many years. So, he's back in Baltimore. The crowd was really hot for CM Punk. And he also let it be known, like, you know what? I get it. Drew is, you know, you know, has been talking his talk, been talking trash and all this other stuff. He prayed for me to get injured, but 
I'm smiling because I know for a fact this is not done. And I'm going to do whatever I can to get my hands on him. So, Drew, bring your ass out here so I can beat the crap out of you. CM Punk standing on business. I may have lost, but I'm not done with. I'm not done with Drew yet. But then Seth comes out there. Uh, and Seth's not smiling. He's not singing. He's not doing none of that. He's walking out with a straight face. He unzips his jacket. It looks like he's ready to go. He pulls out a microphone. He said, you know what? I'm, I'm, I don't like you. I'm sick of you. We don't need you. And I'm going to be the one to put you down. Because in CM Punk's promo, he said, Drew didn't finish the job. I'm still standing. I'm still breathing. You didn't put me down. Seth came out there saying, you know what? I'm going to put you down. I'm going to end this with you for good. I've been waiting a long time to do this. I'm going to put you down. And obviously, Seth feels some type of way because he did catch a GTS in that match. So he gets in the ring and CM Punk's like, let's fucking go, bro. They're locked in. They're ready to go. Drew's in the crowd. He's like, hey, man, what's wrong with y'all? We supposed to be having a good time. Like, what are y'all doing? Like, what? Come on, y'all, guys. They're not paying attention. Oh, y'all not going to listen to me? And then he gives CM Punk some problems. Like, you know what, CM Punk? Listen to me, man. I'm about to talk about you. Like, come on, look at me. He's like, look, I will give you credit, CM Punk. You came out there, and I did not expect you to last as long as you did. You, you, you fought hard. You brought the fight to me. You was once the best in the world, but now I am the best in the world. Punk's not looking at him, not paying him no attention. He's only looking at Seth, just focused in. Then Drew said, all right, I'm going to up the answer. You don't want to listen to me. He pulled out the bracelet. He's like, he's like, you know what? I still have your stupid looking dog and your wife with me. And once he heard that, Punk said, fuck you, Seth. Got out that ring and ran right up them steps and was trying to kill, murder, trying to end um, Drew McIntyre. So, but before I get into what happens next, which was really crazy, super intense, Bronson Reed was trying to have a conversation with Adam Pierce and like, yo, I need something to do. Like, what's going on here? Like, what, what's happening? And Adam Pierce didn't have nothing for him. So Bronson was like, all right, fine. You don't have nothing for me. I'm just going to have to make some waves for myself. And boy, he did. Because as Seth Rollins is sitting in the ring by himself, all of a sudden, Bronson Reed comes out there, attacks Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins starts to get a little bit of the upper hand, but ultimately he's not able to and proceeds to get packed up. Ends up getting... Bruh, this was so good. Bronson Reed goes to the top, hits a splash. Goes to the top again, hits a splash again. Now officials coming in there. Goes to the top again, hits another splash. Officials trying to stop him. He leaves the ring. Nah, gets back in, goes to the top rope again, and hits another splash on Seth. Now Seth is selling the ribs, his body. He's coughing up blood. You think it's over? He's walking up the ramp. Nope. He goes back up to the top again and hits another splash. Nobody can stop this guy. Nobody's moving Seth out the way so Bronson Reed can stop going to the top rope and squashing this man. And then he goes up there another time and squashes Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is KO. Throw up the X to him. This was great. This was the best they've done to make Bronson Reed look like a legit monster he monster he killed seth rollins this was good which is leading me to believe they're gonna do a seth rollins versus bronson reed at bash in berlin it's a quick way once again it makes sense bronson reed's frustrated he wants to get into some type of action adam pierce didn't give him that so guess what he just goes out there and destroys a top guy now we're gonna have a match because seth rollins is gonna want to get his revenge like what the fuck he tried to end his career Love it. Just to make a point. Love that segment. That was really good. Love what they did there. We go backstage and um, we see 
uh, CM Punk with a steel chair trying to find Drew. Alan Pierce said, I already sent him home. And CM Punk is pissed because he was trying to kill him. We're going to, hopefully we get another match at Bash in Berlin. I can't fucking wait. So we'll see how that plays out as well. So we got the Damian Priest versus JD McDonough match. You knew Judgment Day was going to get involved here. And that's essentially what happened. JD definitely held his own. But, you know, <clears throat> um, Damian Priest was pissed. He, he was going to make a statement. But ultimately, the rest of Judgment Day got involved with uh, Dominic and, and, <clears throat> and Liv Morgan and Finn Balor all pretty much attacking um, <clears throat> Damian Priest here. And no, you had you didn't see Rhea the entire show. You had not seen her until Liv got involved, and that's when you saw Rhea come down to the ring, and the crowd went crazy. Huge pop for Rhea coming down to the ring, and she went right after Dominic and Liv. Dominic got the hell up out of there. Liv wasn't fast enough. Liv started catching the beat, beating her up, throwing her into the ring post. Cleared out the announce table, was about to power bomb Liv Morgan through the announce table, but Dominic saved her at the last minute. So close. They're teasing it. So we get Rhea gets back in the ring. JD is still in the ring. And JD's facing Rhea. Uh Damian Priest is on the other side of him. Rhea headbutts uh JD and Finn Balor hits a beautiful south, south of heaven on to um. JD, I believe that's the finishing move that that modified chokeslam. Beautiful. JD sells it. And the Terror Twins, which everyone's calling them that. Terror Twins stand tall. It does seem like we're probably, it would make sense if they do a tag team, mixed tag team between JD, or not JD, um, Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest versus Liv Morgan and Dominic Mysterio at uh, Bash in Berlin. We will see how that plays out, but um, we'll see if that if that is the case. That may be something that happens. But the Tear Twins stand tall, love what they're doing. They are over. Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley are over. It made sense for them to leave Judgment Day. The baby face, they're baby faces now. There's no need for them to be a part of the group. This is going to be good. Can't wait to see how it happens. And then we also got to talk about the main event with the Wyatt Six versus... Um, Chad Gable and um, the Creed Brothers. I think they they call their group now instead of um, I think they call them American Made instead of Al, uh, um, Alpha Academy. You know, he said y'all can have that name now. He calls them American Made. American Made. So that's their new name. Eh, we'll see if it sticks or not. But they came out there, and you see at the entrance ramp, Bray's chair with the lantern. They all come out. It was a cool entrance. Uh, you got Gacy in the match. You had uh, Eric Rowan in the match. And you had Dexter Loomis in the match. And uh, Uncle Howdy, or a.k.a. Uh, Bo Dallas, was sitting by uh, sitting in the chair. And you had, sister, um, not Sister Abigail, uh, you had Nikki Cross sitting in front of him. And this was a fun match to see them out there. You got an Eric. We want Eric Rowan chance. This was so dope. It was it was good, very impactful. And um, ultimately, the um, uh, the Wyatt Six end up defeating uh, Chad Gable and um, the Creed Brothers, American Made. Uh, it was just dope. This was just just to see the visual, to see these guys go out there, to see Eric Rowan out there. Moving the way he's moving, the original Wyatt family member, and to see that it was, it was, it was such a beautiful moment, man. And even Michael Cole said, Bray's looking down upon us, happy. He would be proud, and it was, it was great. It was, it was fantastic. You can see Eric Rowan just was happy to be out there. Uh, he was about to dive back in the ring at one moment. He, you know kissed his hands up you know up up above it, it it was it was beautiful man it was beautiful obviously the, them winning makes sense we'll see where they go with that don't know if the storyline with uh american made is done but uh this was great way to end off the show and I'm, I'm definitely hyped to see where things what happens on 
uh, Friday Night SmackDown and leading into Bash in Berlin. Overall, great show. Love uh, Monday Night Raw tonight. Comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy Monday Night Raw? Um, what was your favorite match or segment of the show? And are you guys excited for what's about to happen potentially on Friday Night SmackDown with the return of Roman Reigns, the OTC, the original Tribal Chief? But I appreciate all love for y'all showing on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.